Every year on the 4th of July, Americans all across the country will fire off millions of fireworks into the air. This year alone, it was estimated we spent $2.7 billion on fireworks. So as I was filming the local display of fireworks, telling myself I was getting these photos and videos just for pure enjoyment of my friends and family, when in reality, I can't stop working, I got started thinking, how would these firework explosions look underneath a thermal imaging camera? It's not every day I get the chance to record explosions and see what they look like, at least without the ATF coming and paying a visit to my dogs, or heading overseas with my drones to try and produce some sunflower fertilizer. Neither of those sound like great ideas, so until the guys from Ballistic High Speed get tired of me bugging them with memes on Twitter and invite me out to one of their high explosive videos, let's see what we can learn from these good old fashioned American fireworks. All of this thermal footage was shot on the DJI Mavic 3T. I'm a huge fan of the Mavic 3T, not just because of its capability for thermal imaging, but because it takes really great high quality photos and videos too. This isn't a review video though, so let's just get to the action. I filmed the fireworks in three different color spectrums, which doesn't affect how the thermal spits out information, it just helps differentiate between the thermal energy coming into the camera sensor. The three spectrums I used were hot iron, white hot, and tint. I filmed the fireworks in two different bands, which we will call fine and wide. Fine will give you a lot more details about the thermal energy source that you're looking at, but maxes out right around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Wide will give you a lot larger spectrum of thermal energy to look at, but the colors will end up muted and muddled, making it a little bit harder to see those finer details. The wide band maxes out right around 950 degrees Fahrenheit though, so you've got a lot larger ceiling to get to. Both have great benefits to them, and I swap between them both often when flying search and rescue missions or firefighting missions. This is what the fireworks looked like being fired off from several hundred feet away while being filmed on the wide view portion of the camera. This is how the fireworks would mostly look like to the naked eye. And this is that same exact clip I just showed you, but filmed on the wider, broad spectrum of the thermal camera. And of course filmed in the tint coloration. And here are both of those clips played at the exact same time. Two things stand out to me really quickly looking at this video. The first is the amount of heat generated by the firework being shot off. I did not expect so much thermal energy to be generated from just a small little firework being fired into the air. And second is the exact opposite, how little heat was generated from the firework explosion. You can see as the sparks start to drop down, they lose almost all of their thermal energy within the first second or two. Considering how long and how bright those sparks burned from that firework, I was expecting to see thermal energy signatures falling all the way down to the ground. I'll admit, at first I was a little disappointed. I expected it to be way more heat signature from these fireworks than what really showed up on the thermal sensor. After seeing so much infrared footage of various explosions throughout the Russo-Ukrainian war, these really didn't stand up anywhere close. Obviously the explosions we're seeing in the conflict have fuel involved and different variations of explosives, but I thought they would be at least close in comparison. Instead, the firework explosions were kind of a blink and you'll miss it sort of thing. As soon as they burned, they were out. As you can see, even on this recording where I had rapid fire fireworks going off and I couldn't figure out which part of the show I wanted to focus on, when you such already in infrared, they barely show up at all, and as soon as they show up, they're completely gone and over with. In fact, if you're focusing on just seeing the fireworks, you'll completely miss the fact that the mortar that they're coming out of glows like a beacon. So there's a couple good things we've learned from this information, even while the firework show underneath the thermal imager might be a little lackluster. The first is that fireworks are actually a lot safer than I expected. I never really saw any of these sparks drift down towards the ground at any point during the show. And secondly, if you're taking fire from mortars or cannons, or you're simply on the lookout for potential legal fireworks shows, go ahead and keep your eyes trained on the ground and look for the jets of flame that come up, which might be just a couple of sparks on normal view, but are a huge source of heat for infrared. And to be clear, 
I'm not trying to downplay the dangers of fireworks, whether it be their explosions or the thermal energy produced by them. After all, at the end of the day, there are mostly legal bombs that we set off for fun and should be treated with respect due to bombs. I guess I just went into it expecting to see something way more spectacular in the thermal imaging than I really did. But hey, life is like that sometimes. All I know is next fireworks show I go to, I will definitely be focusing more on catching the spectacle than wondering what it looks like underneath thermal imaging. And since I haven't hit the 8 minute mark for my AdSense yet, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in some more clips of how the fireworks look like in comparison. I know it's well past 4th of July at this point and no one's thinking about fireworks, but this will just be something interesting to keep in mind for the next time July 4th or the New Year celebration comes around when you see the fireworks exploding in the sky. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of the show.